Good morning all. Uh, join me as I try to make the 8-bit computer, 8-bit breadboard computer, um, actually execute an instruction. Let's get going. So one of the things I've decided about this computer is that it's going to be all CMOS, so I don't want any LSTTL on it. And this is all LSTTL, so that's all going to come off. Let's yank all these wires out, pull these LEDs out, we don't want those and uh, get rid of the LSTTL chips. Now these two here are LS374 and uh, you can see from the wiring that um, they're all higgledy-piggledy inputs and outputs so they're no good we don't want those and I'm going to replace these with uh, this one out here which is an HC574 which has all its inputs uh, along this front edge here and all its outputs along that back edge so that's going to be much more good so out comes the uh, LS374 and in goes the HC574. Uh, Let's get the positive and negative to line up with the uh, power link. So that's good. Out comes the LS244, which is an 8-bit buffer. And in is going to go an HC541, I think it is. Yes, here they are, HC541. Uh, these have obviously been post-bagged because they're sort of out. So let's get one of these. Uh, CMOS 8-bit buffer chip. That's going to go there. Just need to straighten the legs on it. Uh, which I'm going to do by just pressing it down on my mat. That's one side. Press down the other side. Are the legs fairly straight? Yeah, they look pretty good. So that can go in there. Align it with the... Uh, power links. Good. Now I need um, an input device and an output device because the first instruction I'm going to write into this computer is going to be copy from an input device to an output device. The output device will be this set of LEDs. Let's shove that in the breadboard there. The input device will be this set of switches. I'm going to put it upside down. Oh, that's got a bit bent there uh, for reasons which I can explain at some point. So let's put the switches in there. So the uh, computer instruction is simply going to copy the pattern of data on the switches and write it to the eight LEDs. Right, so I need some uh, printouts of uh, data sheets for these um, buffer and uh, latch chips. Here's the HC541. But I don't really like uh, these Nexperia ones. I don't like the way these are laid out. What I want is a picture of the chip with all the pins on it and what they actually do in a sort of pictorial form. I'm going to switch to a Texas Instruments one, I think. Yeah, this is more like it. I just want a picture of the chip with all its pins numbered and the functions of the pin so that I can just wire the thing up. So, uh, yeah, let's print this one out. Right, I've got an HC541. I've got HC574. That's those two. And also printed out the HC138 uh, because that's these two um, address decoders, which I'm going to need to wire up as well. Let's start wiring up um, these chips up here. What I don't need are all these links because they were the links that were in there for the LS, I um, can't remember, 241 or something like that. And they're going to, oh, I've bent that one quite badly. They would cause problems with this because it's uh, a completely different arrangement of pin uh, arrangements. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is um, connect all of the outputs of the 541 buffer, which are these Ys starting at pin 18, to the corresponding inputs of the uh, 574 latch, which are the Ds starting at uh, pin 2. So let's do that with some short pieces of cut wire. So 541 uh, Y0 pin 18 to uh, 574 pin 2. And then I think I just run along in a sequence. Uh, pin 17 goes to pin 3. Pin 16 goes to pin 4 and so on. So this is in effect my data bus. So I'll get all those eight wires in. Yes, I spotted the misalignment. I was on 17. I've moved it to 18. That's been corrected. Let's now connect um, the LEDs. I'm going to go for the 
middle eight LEDs uh, to corresponding outputs. So these little shorter wires uh, can go on here. And then I'm going to need a sill resistor pack, a single in line resistor pack uh, to bring the cathodes, I've marked a K on the bottom of that um, display, to bring the cathodes down to ground. So for the sill pack, I'm going to use 470 ohms. So that's a 471. That's fine. Uh, right, I've put a ground there. So I need to, this is my common pin there. So I need to flip that round, put that on there. Oh, no, that doesn't work. So I'm going to have to move that back because I'm using the inner eight LEDs on here. And I'm just going to black out the uh, two LEDs on the ends because I'm not going to use those and I don't want them to show up. I want uh, to be able to see the eight LEDs that uh, are going to light up so that I can see the uh, positionings of the bits. Right, the HC574 is um, a latch with a clock input, but it's also an output buffer, um, which is tri-state, uh, and the output enable needs to, well, it doesn't say on here, but I think it needs to be pulled low in order to drive the outputs. Otherwise, they'll just sit in there third state, their high impedance state. So let's pull pin one low. I'm almost certain that's what it needs to be pulled to. Uh, clock, I'm just going to sort of waggle it with um, a piece of wire just to see if I can trigger this thing. Now I need to set uh, the enables on this. It's got two of them, pins one and 19. They both have to be pulled low. Right, on the switch pack, I need to um, pull all these uh, this side low, uh, which I could do with eight wire links to ground, but actually I think I'm just going to use a 471 uh, sill pack because it's just going to be quicker. So let's put that in there, and then I've got a single ground. It's not going to pull very hard low, um, but it, when these switches are open, I want the inputs of the buffer to go high because the switch is actually upside down. On is down, so that will pull low. So I'm going to put a, like a 47k in there, which is up the other end of this little kit uh, so that can go across the top and then I'll pull that to VCC and this one to ground. Right now I need, need to link um, the eight switch positions actually I'll do it where I can see it uh, to the eight inputs of the buffer which are A0 to A7 here. Uh, I've got a bit of a rag bag assortment of wires now but um, it should be enough just to link that through to there. And then I can uh, start clocking this latch and seeing that data on this switch goes into the display. We'll put some power to it in a moment. Right, so I'm just putting power to this section here. So all it's uh, gonna be is um, a thing where the LED display should follow the switches. Now I do need to clock this latch. Uh, so I've got a bit of wire here. I might be able to just induce some mains into there. Let's see what happens. Let's bring some of these switches down. So that's not responding immediately because, of course, the latch isn't being triggered. Can I trigger it? Yeah, I just need to touch this. Let's bring a couple more of these switches down. This switch bank has to, um, it's a bit tight at the moment. Let's just touch that. And actually, I just need to get near it. And it induces some noise into the clock input of this latch. Latches the new pattern in and the pattern appears on the LEDs. Now, that's not my computer running. Let's put those high again. Touch that. And it updates. Good. Right, in order to connect um, this input device and this output device into the computer, let's link this clock input to one of the outputs of, well, my two HC138s. Now this one's gonna be the read device uh, address decoder. So that's the uh, 541. And this one's gonna be the write device. So this is the write device, the latch for the uh, LEDs. Let's put it into uh, address Y2, that's pin 13. So that's uh, 16, 15, 14, 13. Let's just shove it in there. So now this chip will clock uh, that latch. So the uh, destination or the right um, address decoder, we need to put the addresses in, A0, A1, A2. Now those are gonna come from the low order bits of uh, this second RAM. So A0 is that input. That will go to the most low order bit of the RAM output, which is there. And then I need the next bit, A1, 
to the next lowest bit. Now I'm only going to use three bits on here um, because I've got four bits read, four bits write. Now that could theoretically address uh, 16 devices, but these are only three to eight decoders. So I'm only going to have the potential to decode um, three bits to eight bits at the moment. So let's just do that. So that's those three bits there. That should do that. Now I need all the enables. I've got two active low enables and I've got an active high enable. I'll link those up to uh, VCC and ground. Oh, one thing I'll do is take these traffic lights out. Red, amber, green. That was for a, uh, a, re a really failed experiment on this. You can watch um, a video about that if you want. If I'll link it up there uh, so that you can watch the traffic lights video. And uh, finally, uh, I just want to link power that's on these two boards to the rest of the computer, which I can do just by bridging across here, uh, plus to plus, like that. And I want a minus to minus. This bottom half should light up now. Yep, that's lit up. The RAM chips have uh, powered up and I've got garbage data in the RAMs. Right, now to program it. Right, now I'm having some problems with power distribution because if I sort of press on these wires, this LED attached to the output of the 555 changes brightness. So yeah, I'm having trouble getting power from up here down onto the clock and memory sections. Uh, it seems to be working, but um, I think I'll add some more of these red and purple wires, which are my plus five volts and ground. So I bought this little kit of uh, jumper wires a while back on eBay and it has these long red ones. Well, I can cut these down and it has these slightly different length uh, purple ones. So what I'll do is I'll string them across like here from there to there. Um, probably put a little pen mark where I want to cut it. So it's going to go about there. And then I'll cut that, bend it over, and that will create a new link wire. And I'll just add as many link wires as I can. Right, so I've just put a red one in there, and that does appear to be slightly better on the LED now. Let's just make a purple one, distribute ground a little bit further afield. That should help with the power situation. Right, it's time to actually program this computer now. Now you can see that um, the switches here are not being copied into the LEDs here and that's because I haven't actually written the program instructions into the computer's memory to tell it to copy that device to that device. Now these two devices are numbered two. This one is number two, this one is number two and that's defined by which output of these address decoders I connect the wire to. I've chosen two because I didn't want it to trigger on zero because currently this memory has uh, zero in it. Let's take a look at the instruction that I'm going to put into the computer. There's only one to actually get this copy, this transfer to take place. Right, let's write down the instruction. Now I'm going to do it in a high level language. It's one I'm just going to make up. It's going to be at address zero uh, in the computer's address memory. We want to copy um, the read device to but we'll actually do it in an even higher level. We'll call it switches, switches uh, to LEDs. So that's the first part of the instruction, but there's actually a second part of the instruction because there are two RAMs here and they're both paralleled out with these pink wires. So the second part of the instruction is go to zero. So on address zero, we do that instruction, copy the switches to the LEDs, and then we go to zero so that we keep um, executing the same thing over and over again. And we should see that if we can get that successfully programmed in, then the computer will copy uh, this device to this device. And we should get that pattern mirrored on the LEDs. OK, let's uh, get this into a more machine code format. Right, let's actually start with the go to part of the instruction. Now that's on these red switches. Uh, so I'm going to do this in red pen. And it's simply at location zero, go to zero. So I've done that in red. Now that's already programmed in here. In fact, I'll switch this off so that we get random data in the computer. And we can see that uh, we've got 
random patterns going in there clocked by this clock LED. Every time that comes on, it clocks uh, a new pattern into here. So what I want to do is program in all zeros. Let's write that in. I'll hold the right pin so that we've got zero in location zero. What that means is at location, uh, RAM, RAM location zero, go to zero because the output of this RAM is simply fed back into its input. So that's been implemented. Now on the blue, we want to read from device two and we want to write to device two. Uh, the read device two is the switches, the write device two are the LEDs. So we want to do um, read two, write two. I suppose I could write it as um, read from two and write to two. I could do this arrow notation. So something along that, those lines. Now the way this works is that we have 16 read uh, addresses and they're binary coded so it's the first four bits of here these are that's the read address currently it seems to be reading from address 0101 so that's five and writing to address 1010 which is or what is that a I think it is in hexadecimal so we want to program into there uh, read from two. Oh, this is a new switch bank Yes, it's all gone a bit glitchy, hasn't it? What's that doing? We got some bad wiring somewhere. Um, but let's program that in. So that's programmed in. Read from two, write to two. So now every time the... Oh, the clock seems to have stopped flashing. Why is that? We've got some really bad power distribution problems on here. But I'll persevere. So I've actually programmed in now at location zero, a go to zero. And also at location zero, I've programmed in a read from device two and write to device two. So it should read the switches and write to the LEDs. Let's try changing the switches. Set this first one high. And yes, that's reflected there. Of course, it doesn't happen until the clock um, goes to the correct phase. Let's lift another one up. That one went almost immediately. Another one. And uh, the switch pack is falling out of the board. That's because these switch packs are new and so the switches are a bit stiff. But yeah, you can see that as I flip the switches, let's flip them down, it's reflected in the LEDs. Um, of course, when these switches get too loose, they stop making contact like the blue one here. I had to remove it and put in a new one. So that's the instruction. Um, let's make it a bit neater. Let's cross all that out. So on the blue, because we do the copy switches to LEDs first and then we go to zero, because that's the more conventional way of doing it, it's simply blue is two to device two, read device two, write to device two. And in the same instruction, um, we're on zero. I suppose I could put that there, go to zero. So at uh, location zero in this memory, we do a read from device two, write to device two. That's the two, two there and then we go to zero. So we stay on instruction zero. Right, just to get a clearer idea of how this works, let's change the program so that we, we carry on doing that at uh, address zero. We can't see anything on here because that's not lit up because it's at zero. But let's put at address one, we'll do a read three, write to three. Now, of course, nothing will happen because I haven't got a device which is addressed as number three. So that's in, in effect a no op. And um, we will do a go to one there. So what happens is at zero, it executes the read to write to, which is the copy from the switches to LEDs. Then it jumps to location. Actually, no, that won't work. We need to jump to location one there. Then it jumps to location one. At location one, it does effectively a no op and then locks itself at location one. So it will only actually execute that instruction once and then it will simply stop executing that instruction. Let's program that in. So at address um, zero, we want to go to one. So let's stop the clock running. Press reset. So that forces us to be at, at address zero. We got zero on there. Let's tell it at address zero to jump to address one. If I can prevent these things jumping out of there positions. Why isn't that working? Have we got power distribution problems again? 
Oh, I haven't got um, an indicator there. I'm going to have to borrow this one. I need to make another one of these. Uh, how does that fit in? Yes, that has successfully programmed a one at address uh, zero. Let's move the clock on. So we're now at address one and we've got garbage data. Let's write another one in. And so now if we go back to address zero, you can see it'll jump to address one. Move the clock on at address one. It locks on address one. So now we need to put in the data. Let's go back to address zero. I will need to borrow that display. I really do need to make another display, don't I? Because that's not very satisfactory. Um, we wanted at address zero, which we're at, to copy two to two. At address one, so let's move on. We want to copy three to three. So let's lift these two up, write that in. So that's now going to copy device three to device three. So that's the program. Let's uh, free run it. Reset that. It executes um, instruction zero, which you can see is two to two. And then it very quickly moves on to the next instruction, which is copy three to three. And of course, that's not going to do anything. So if I now change these switches, you'll see that uh, their positions, let's make that a bit clearer. Their positions are not reflected in that LED bank. And that's because it's executing the instruction copy three to three. We don't have devices number three. These are number two. Only if I put the program back to its uh, zero location, will it, uh, should it, yes, executes the um, copy two to two and we get that copied over from the switches to the LEDs. I think the reason this is a bit flaky is I'm not synchronizing um, my reset with the clock. So let's actually stop the clock free running, reset the program so that it's going to execute that instruction. It probably won't immediately change the switch settings, single step it to execute the instruction. No, it didn't do it, did it? Why didn't it do it? Let's reset that, execute the instruction. Definitely got a problem there where it's not actually executing the instruction because it jumps too quickly onto the second instruction. I could cheat by padding this out with another uh, dummy instruction at zero, put my copy two to two at one, and then my lockup no op at say two. Mm, maybe I'll try that. Yeah, I think the problem here is it's actually executing the go to before it's executing the instruction. So if I go to location zero, when I press this switch, the very first thing that happens is it jumps to location one, which is the uh, instruction copy three to three, but it doesn't actually execute the copy two to two. So I've got to think about that and possibly do some rewiring um, to make it work reliably like that. So let's do um, a fudge program. I'll go at address zero, I'll copy one to one, at address one, two to two, and address two, three to three, and the go-tos. Um, at address zero, I'll go to one. At address one, I'll go to two. But at address two, I'll go also go to two. I'll just program that in. Right, I've programmed that in. So at address zero, we do a one-to-one -one instruction. At address one, we do a two-to-two. -two. That's the one that will actually transfer the switches to the LEDs. And at address two, we do a three-to-three. -three but then it locks on that point and doesn't go any further. So yeah, it's kind of working and uh, yeah, I'm reasonably happy. I just need to sort out the power distribution problems. And also I know that this blue wire is very thin and it doesn't make a very good connection in the breadboard, but um, I've set up this little setup. Uh, so don't worry too much about the go-to addresses. They were random data that was in there, but I've programmed in the instructions, uh, copy two to two, which we know will copy the switches to the LEDs and then alternately copy three to two. Now there's no device three. So the bus, and this is actually the data bus, these wires in the middle here will just be high impedance, but it seems that this buffer treats a high impedance bus as uh, all low. So it's clocking in alternately the switch bank and then an empty data bus, which it interprets as all low. So it's actually flashing between um, whatever the switches are set to and all loads. If I change the switches, I can get it to flash dynamically between my switch pattern and all lows. Let's make a few other changes to the switch pattern so that we can see that it is actually copying it. So now it's, that's interesting because it's now not interpreting the bus as all lows. Remember this is CMOS, 
so everything's very high impedance so maybe there's just sort of um some energy latched into this data bus that's very interesting actually let's go back to these being low that's in oh yes it's back to doing what um it was before now it's interpreting an empty data bus as all lows and then uh on the other instruction it's copying the switches to the leads yeah that's fine so yeah that's good um today i just simply wanted to get it executing uh these instructions and uh reading from a device and writing to a device uh, there's a lot more work to be done sorting out power distribution issues putting in more devices so that we've got more devices to read from and more devices to write to uh, and expanding the 8-bit computer but uh, for today cheerio <laughs>